Welcome everyone to our weekly Forex market analysis call and this is for trading for the week of September 24th to the 28th, 2018. And let's take a look at what's coming up for this week. But before we dive in, just a quick disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so as usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar here. So in terms of news uh, events that are coming up, on Monday here on September 24th, we do have ECB President Draghi speaking. He did speak last week as well. Um, unless he adds something new, I do not expect it to have a lot of, uh, lot of impact. But again, anytime there's a central banker speaking, there is potential for the market to move based on the comments. So we do keep, need to keep an eye on that. Other than that, we do have monetary policy meeting minutes here for Japan that will have an impact. So keep an, um, keep an eye um, on that here. Monetary policy meeting minutes always have an impact. So especially with uh, Japan here, because we do have impact. Um, Sorry, um, so I was saying, yeah, there will be an impact um, from, especially with Japan here. Japan is a, uh, Japanese yen is a safe haven currency. Um, and when there is risk in the market, when there is uncertainty in the market, the safe haven currencies tend to go up. So recently we have seen a lot of stuff that's going on in the market. There's Brexit stuff, there's NAFTA negotiations, and especially trade wars with China, and they seem to move the market based on those. So make sure you keep um, keep an eye on the news. So anyway, so monetary policy meeting minutes here will be important. We do have Bank of Japan govern uh, Kuroda speaking, which will definitely have an impact because, um, well, depending on if, he, if he's talking about this, which likely there will be. Um, so keep that in mind. Consumer confidence number for U.S. here is likely to have an impact, especially if it erodes, that will not be good. And then a trade balance here for New Zealand will have an impact for a New Zealand dollar here, as well as the business confidence number. The most important thing coming up this week, very, very important, is this FOMC here. So um, Fed has been raising rates for the last little while here, a uh, couple of years here. Now we are expecting to see an interest rate hike from, uh, from the Fed. So generally, when we see an interest rate hike from a country, that currency goes up. But... Um, we have seen hikes that are considered dovish. And why is it dovish? Because they will do an interest rate hike and then they will have some negative comments um, on that. So even though interest rate hike is supposed to push the currency up, but the comments that go with the with the hike, if those are negative, that can have a negative impact on the currency. So just be mindful of that. Um, just because there's, a, there's an interest rate hike doesn't mean it will automatically be good for the currency. So keep that in mind. Again, very, very important on Wednesday. And um, prior to a big news like this, we do tend to see that markets can go sideways. So just be aware of that as well. And then on the same day, we have New Zealand dollar monetary policy statements as well as um, interest statement here as well. So they are not, we're not expecting a Reserve Bank of New Zealand to raise rates. Now, comments can, of course, make a difference. So if they say we're not raising rates right now, but the economy is doing well and ta -da -ta -da, like all those comments, positive comments about the economy and the growth and the employment, that type of stuff, that will then be positive uh, for New Zealand dollar. However, if they say, uh, we are concerned about trade wars. We are concerned about what's going on in the just in the world economy at the moment. We are concerned about the growth in the country and the exports, that type of stuff that can be uh, negative for the currency, especially if they are not doing interest rate hike when a lot of uh, central banks are changing the monetary policy and tightening the monetary policy. So that's uh, with the New Zealand here. Going into Thursday, we have GDP, final GDP numbers for the U.S. That will be important here as well, as well as core durable goods. 
uh, ECB President Draghi is speaking once again. And then we have two central bankers speaking here back to back. Uh, again, this will be very important because both of these countries here, so Fed, um, right after having um, the FOMC, we have Fed Chair Powell speaking, and this can, again, his comments can have an impact on the prices, so keep that in mind. And then we have Bank of Canada, Governor Polar speaking. Now his speech, depending on what, what's said in that speech, can move the markets as well, especially because um, Canada is currently going through NAFTA negotiations, and as we have all seen, those have not been going too well at this point. So... Um, those things can have an, or these speeches can have an impact on the prices. Going into Friday here, we have current account uh, numbers for British pound, as well as GDP numbers for Canada. So uh, some important events coming up this week. Let's move on to the charts now. We'll start off with our euro dollar here. So with euro dollar, euro had been a trading in this range and then it did, um, it did a break out of that, went into the next support level and has pushed off from there. Now we are at the top of this, um, of this sideways move here, consolidation. And we saw U.S. index, U.S. dollar index break to the downside. Now, what can we expect from here? Based on the, on the weekly candle close here, this is looking bullish. It has closed above the previous week's um, highs here. So that is quite bullish. And now looking for price to go up further. Target here would be 1.1850. And then if it breaks this high here, then we are looking at price to go up even higher. 1.20 will be the target to the upside. So here we just have to, um, especially with FOMC coming up here, this could be interesting. Definitely the target here is 1.1850 would be my first target. Only if it breaks through holes above only then am I looking for price to go up higher because it could very easily push like that and then come back down back into the range. That is something to be aware of. But right now, bias is bullish. 1.1850 will be the first target. 1.20 will be the second target to the upside. Uh, so head and uh, shoulders pattern, uh, Greg, you're talking about euro here. It looks like a, a inverse head and shoulders pattern. Yes. And this is our head, shoulder, shoulder. So which is bullish as well. So inverse head and shoulders pattern. Yeah, that will be inverse kind of like this here, right? So we have uh, right shoulder, head, uh, sorry, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and then that move to the upside. So this is forming that as well. But here it would have to break the 1.1850 level for it to really go up. And then basically we're looking for this big move to the upside should that happen. So um, yeah, so inverse head and shoulders pattern. So let's take a look at pound here. Pound was interesting on, so we're looking at a daily chart here. Um, we saw this big drop as a result of Brexit here. And because of Brexit, negotiations are going on currently. And as we can see, now we have a weekly pin bar in here. So um, just to keep in mind, Pound will react to Brexit news as negotiations are going. Ongoing negotiations will have an impact. The comments that come out will have an impact. So if you're trading British Pound, you want to make sure you stay on top of your news feed because these comments are not scheduled. They just come out out of nowhere. Now, having said that, so even though US dollar, if US dollar is weak, all the other crosses will go up. Um, against the US dollar with British pound uh, being the same. So here, uh, based on the weekly candle close, this is looking bearish because we have a big rejection here. But the big rejection really happened on Friday. And as we can see, price went into the resistance here and then dropped. Um, but it wasn't the resistance. It wasn't because of the resistance that we saw the drop. It was because of the comments that came out in regards to Brexit, where uh, uh, PM uh, Theresa May said that they're not willing to 
uh, renegotiate on the Ireland border and a Brexit deal that uh, that creates problems for with the Irish border will not be accepted. So that those comments were the ones that actually caused the drop to happen. So the entire week price didn't do a whole lot. It was just trading, went up trading sideways, and then we saw push up and a big push down. So as a result of that, we have a weekly pin bar, which, it, it, which is considered negative here. So based on the weekly pin bar, my bias would be to the downside. But again, if the US dollar tends to be, if US dollar is weak, um, sorry, if US dollar is strong, this one can go up as well. And of course, be always be mindful of pullbacks in this. So overall bias for this one will be to the downside. 1.2780 will be the target to the downside for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, based on our weekly, we have had a big move to the upside here. So bullish candle close, we are into resistance here. So that's something we have to um, pay attention to. Now, with such a big, strong bullish candle close, the bias is uh, bullish. The next target is 0 0.7380. And then above that, looking at this support and resistance, which is 0 0.7460 level. So bias is bullish. Now, again, be mindful of the immediate resistance that this pair is going into. But overall, bias is to the upside. New Zealand dollar, similar thing here as well. Big bullish candle close for the week. And as a result of that, we are looking at um, bullish bias here. And also we'll talk about the US dollar index. US dollar index um, also dropped. And as a result of that, everything is bullish against the US dollar at the moment. So for this one, bullish bias target, um, the first target will be 0 0.6790. So about 6,800 and uh, potentially all the way up to 0 0.6850. Uh, so this is uh, bullish here as well. So overall, um, the bias is bullish. Now, again, with this one as well, because we have resistance right there, um, that will have an impact as well, because what can happen here is price can go into the resistance and just turn around from there. So that's something uh, we have to be, you know, we have to keep in mind because as we can see for the last several weeks here, price has been trading in this range. So when price comes into this resistance, it can turn around. So um, right now we just have to be careful with all these crosses. All right, dollar CAD here, dollar, uh, dollar CAD looking bearish. We have seen a bearish candle close here. And as such, looking for price to drop further, 1.2740 level here, but again, we are into the support level here as well. And uh, we have to see a close below the previous pin here for it to continue lower, but bias is bearish for dollar CAD. Euro pound has been very interesting with a big drop in British pound on Friday. We saw this big move up in Euro pound. So that has given us a bullish candle close as a result of that. And we are looking for price to move up higher. So bias is bullish based on that. And next target here would be 0 0.9100 to the upside. So Euro pound at this moment is looking bullish. Euro Swiss franc here, this one has just traded in this range. And if we were to take a look at daily here, as we can see, this is just range bound at the moment. So what we do see on the weekly candle here is that three times price has tested this high and has rejected it. So with this one, my bias is sideways at the moment, neutral, because I'm looking for price to essentially trade in this range, looking for it to push up and then drop like this. Um, if it rejects the high, looking for it to drop back in. So looking sideways for the moment. So bias is neutral for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc here again, uh, based on the daily, we did get a big drop. There was a pin bar on the daily and a huge drop here just because of British pound. So bearing that in mind, because um, the pound can turn around on a dime because of the Brexit news, 
But if we take a look at it for the last few weeks, this has traded in a range. So now we have a big a bearish candle close here. So bias would be to the downside. Target is 1.2200. Again, we are right into support here. So as we can see, a lot of these crosses have been sideways for the last few weeks, um, which makes trading a little bit difficult because one day it's going up, another day it's coming down. Um, so keep that in mind at all times because there are a lot of stuff going on, a lot of other stuff going on besides the technicals that's driving the market right now. So um, with this one, this one is looking bearish. Keep in mind the bottom here. So we do need to see a break of this pin. So we are right into the bottom of this candle. For it to continue lower, we need to see a break, pull back and hold below for it to continue to the downside. Um, that's the that's the biggest thing I would keep in mind. But right now, bias is bearish for pound Swiss franc. This one here, our bias was a bearish here. As we can see, price has come into that um, into that support level here. Again, bias is bearish. Uh, we have a nice candle close here into support. So I will look for a pullback here and then a drop uh, biases to the downside. Zero point ninety four twenty will be the target to the downside for dollar Swiss franc. Same thing of a pound yen here, big reversal on Friday. And as a result, we have this pin bar um, on our weekly here as a result of that. So price did go into that resistance and has given us this weekly uh, bias to the downside. So with this one, a bias was, would be bearish. I'm looking for price to drop. Target would be 142.50. So uh, bearish bias for pound yen. But do be careful with the pullback here as those can happen. Euro yen uh, daily is looking a bearish here. Weekly is looking quite bullish. And we are almost into the highs here. So bias is bullish. And um, should euro continue higher, this would uh, this is likely to continue higher as well. One thirty four sixty will be the target to the upside. Now there is the first target here at top of the pin at one thirty three fifty. So it needs to clear that for it to go up higher. But this is looking bullish right now. Dollar yen is looking bullish as well. So we do have a bullish candle close here. Next target will be 113.20 and above that we're looking at 113.80 and potentially 114.50. So bias is bullish at this point. But if we look at these two candles here, the momentum seems to be waning a bit. And what that means for us is that price could come into resistance here and then do one of these. That's why when we have a major resistance level or support level, we have to see a break of that and a hold on the other side for the continuation of the trend. Aussie yen here, this is looking quite bullish here as well. And next target will be to the upside. Our target is 83.80 level uh, for, da, for Aussie yen. New Zealand yen here, this one is looking bullish as well. Next target is 76. So we are into this. This is our next support and resistance level, 76.10, 76.20 level. And then above that, um, 76.94. So about 77.00 uh, will be the target. So bias is bullish for um, New Zealand yen as well. But as we can see, the daily here is a pin. So I would look for a pullback before price continues on. Bullish for CAD yen as well. Canadian dollar has been quite strong with oil prices uh, going up. And this is looking bullish. So looking for price to move up higher. Now there is a resistance right into their support resistance level. Um, 87.80 will be the first target, 88.60 will be the second target for CAD yen. All right, so now let's go on to our gold first. Gold been sideways, it's been sideways for a number of weeks now, and um, right now bias is neutral. 
Uh, we still need to wait and see where this one goes, whether it wants to go um, higher or uh, wants to continue to the downside. So at this point, completely neutral. It's just trading within this range. And as a raise, uh, range being a base strategy, if price comes into 12, 14 level here, holds below, then we're looking for it to drop, comes into the bottom. We are looking for, we are looking for price to then um, reverse right here as a range-based strategy until such time that price comes out. Um, with the oil, oil has been a bullish here. It's been moving higher and our weekly close is right into the highs. It hasn't quite broken the um, resistance here, but it's been consistently making higher highs. So oil is looking bullish at the moment. 73.50 will be the target to the upside, which is over here. So if oil keeps going up, dollar CAD is likely to drop. So keep that in mind. Copper here, big push up in copper, right into resistance, and that is looking bullish. So target, next target would be 2.95 for copper. Let's go on to our Bitcoin here. And then we'll take a look at the dollar index. Bitcoin finally broke out of that range that it had been trading in for quite some time, looking bullish right now. It's closed above these previous highs. And next target here will be 69.80. So bullish is bias and uh, 69.80 will be the next target. Last thing here, let's take a quick peek at our dollar index. Okay, so DXY. All right, so we have our dollar index. Let's take a look at the weekly here. So from a weekly perspective, we are looking at, um, so this one is forming a head and shoulders pattern. So if you take a look at it, this is the head in the middle left shoulder, right shoulder, and right now we are into the neckline. So on the daily here, it broke the neckline for the daily. See how we were into, let me just put uh, support resistance line here. It was hanging around here, right into the base here for, for some time, for two, three days, it just was stuck there. And then it finally dropped, which is when we saw that big pop up in all the dollar crosses and then it pulled back on Friday. Now it is into this resistance for the pullback, but it's still looking bearish. So we have to keep an eye on the daily for the dollar index to see what's going on here. But right now we had head and, but basically based on what we have here, we have head and shoulders. So that's our head, left shoulder, right shoulder. Price broke through the daily neckline here. It's retesting it. And if it stays low here, chances are it will drop. So let me just, um, actually, let me draw it out. So we have, um, we have this neckline here, which is not very straight. Okay, so neckline here, drop, pull back, and potentially another drop right into the support level here. So that's what I would, uh, I would be looking for. But... We do have to keep in mind when we look at our weekly here, uh, we see this support. So weekly, there is support right here at 93.79. So if it does break that support, then we have this 93.25 and then it's a free drop all the way into this area here. So head and shoulder, it's a reversal, bearish reversal pattern. So we have seen that break on the daily. And right now the weekly is looking bearish. I will look for it to drop further, 93.60 and then a 93.25 level here. So for dollar index, bias is bearish, which means for dollar crosses, bias will be bullish. So that's our dollar index looking bearish at the moment. Um, unless something changes with FOMC, of course, that can make all the difference in the world. So we do need to keep an eye on that. Um, any questions before we wrap it up here? 
Uh, before we wrap it up, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently running a trade room promotion if you are interested in it. Um, the, mar the analysis that we did here, we do this kind of a comprehensive analysis, but uh, with larger number of pairs um, every single day, uh, we meet in the evening and the call is recorded as well. So you can always go review it. So basically uh, we go through multiple pairs and we look at the market direction as well as the levels to take trades from. Um, I also have a private Skype group where I share my uh, trade ideas and analysis um, while the market is live so we can uh, respond to things as they are going. Um, I also send out trade alerts that are posted in the Skype group as well as on Twitter. Um, and as a bonus um, for joining the trade room, you'll get my pivot point indicator as well as the course, um, my Forex course, which I currently sell for $4.97 that will be included. Regular price um, right now is $97 a month for uh, for the trade room, which means it's almost $1,200 a year. But right now I'm offering it for $997 uh, for the entire year, as well as you get uh, the bonuses, which you would otherwise spend $500 for buying that course. Um, I am making changes to my courses, um, making them more comprehensive and going forward in October, price structure is going to change and the prices will go up to 3000 per year and that will include the trade room as well. So I'm not, I'm just going, going to focus on one product and that's it. Um, if you want to join, you can go to this link here, uh, bit.ly yearly trade room. Uh, Amy, you want to look at EXY? We can do that. All right, let's have a look. All right, so EXY, which is our Euro index. And Euro index looking bullish. It has the inverse head and shoulders pattern here. We're going into the neckline here. Um, so there is bullish, so it's bullish based on the weekly. And next target is 118.30 here. So this is looking pretty much the same as what euro looks like. There is room to the upside, which I would look for it to go into. And then at 118, we have to watch out because um, if it does not clear that resistance, then it can go back into the range, come back into the range here like that, which it has been doing for quite some time and for several weeks here as well. Um, however, if the momentum carries to the upside and FOMC is not very good, likely we will see this happen. Um, right now looking bullish, so we have head, left shoulder, right shoulder going right into neckline here. If the neckline breaks, looking for a pullback and then uh, push to the upside. So this is looking bullish here. And next one you wanted to take a look at was Uh, C and Y, C and Y. Okay, C and Y I am not very familiar with, so we'll just take a look at what the chart's telling us. For weekly here, uh, we have, looks like big rejection here and looking bearish. Uh, let me just put some support resistance levels here. So we had drop, pull back, drop. It's holding below. So that's looking bearish. It's holding below this level. So this support and resistance. So that's looking bearish. We do have room to the downside and all the way to there. So 4172 will be the target to the downside. So this one is looking bearish at the moment. And there was one other question looking at Euro Aussie. Let's go back to the charts here.
Um, Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie is from the weekly perspective, it's looking bearish. We are into support right here, and the next target would be 1.5900, but we need to get past 1.6040 level. From a daily perspective, uh, there's room, yeah, so there's room to the downside here till 1.6040, and then potentially into. 1.5950 and then 1.5900 level. So bias is bearish for Euro Aussie right here. However, because overall it is an uptrend, one thing we have to keep in mind while trading this one is if it does not uh, break through the support at 1.6040 level, it can go back up as well because then it would just be making higher highs, right? It's, uh, sorry, higher lows, and it's already made higher high here. It could just be continuing on with the uptrend. Uh, but right now, the bearish candle close for the week. I will look for a retest of 1.6040 level, and then um, if it goes through that, then 1.5900. Any other questions before we wrap it up here? Okay, so it looks like that's all for, the, for today's question. So you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a great trading week, and I'll see you next time.